All right, guys, here's a quick video on how to kind of get a somewhat decent visual inspection on your cam lobes. You guys know the KTM 790s and 890s Adventures and Dukes have a run of bad cams, and you want to theoretically inspect them every now and then to see what shape yours are in. So uh, this is on my Duke. If you're on an adventure, removing all the tank and fairings and stuff will be a different journey. But kind of once you get in here, this will show you what you're going to be looking at if you want to do a visual inspection, kind of a cheater not a thorough inspection, but at least you can get your eyes on it. So uh, this will be my journey of how to get to this point, if it helps you. I did it last night, so I'm trying to go from memory. Okay, so on the Duke, let's see here. Rear cowl off, then take the seat off, and then the next step is the tank. And if I remember, around your key here, there's a little plastic trim piece. It comes off, gets out of the way. And then on your tank, on my bike, if I'm pretty sure the best bet was to remove the white plastic shrouds that go on the tank, plastic shrouds. So you can remove them uh, on the inside or some black plastic, you know, pieces. And so I would just advise, kind of take it all off. You may not need to, but that'll be your easiest course of action. So take the shroud off and uh, then you're ready to take the tank off. On the tank, guys, move slow. Don't just unplug one or two things and try to take the tank off. There's about seven or eight fittings underneath there. So when you start to raise it, you'll see some electrical connectors. Those, you can't miss those. They only go in the right spot. You can't mess them up. Uh, real important, on the bottom of the tank, which will sneak up on you, are two vent hoses. So that goes on the bottom of the tank. There's one in the front that's a little harder to get to. You may need a second person to help you or a towel or something to keep you from scratching everything up. Um, you've got your fuel line uh, that connects to the bottom of the tank, and it's just got a plastic, you know, this green clip that you get out of the way, then you can pull this off. It's a little hard to get off, but you'll put it back on when you're done and, and do that clip. And uh, there may be one or two other little electrical connectors under there, but moral of the story is when you start taking the tank off, raise it kind of gently, pull it back a little bit. You know, these tanks all ride on these round rubber donuts there. Raise it back, lift it. If you feel resistance, something is still connected under there likely. So just take a look. You'll get it all disconnected. <clears throat> then uh, you raise the uh, tank off the bike. Uh, I do remember on the bottom of the tank, real careful, there's a little plastic piece that comes out the bottom of the tank where the fuel line connects. It's plastic. So don't take your tank off and just set it on the garage floor. You may hit that plastic piece too hard and break it. So put it on a towel or be real careful about that because you wouldn't want to break that for sure. Okay, and now next steps is uh, probably out of order for a little bit, but you can figure it out. On a Duke, you've got these black uh, plastic trim pieces. This one had an electrical component connected to it. You take the trim pieces off. On this side, there was a canister. It had some hoses connected to it. I don't know if there's anything electrical, but, you know, just take your hoses off, take pictures, keep up with it. You'll be able to figure it out. And then you come over to the other side is where your coolant uh, reservoir is <clears throat> on this side. So you take it off, disconnect your hoses from the reservoir. I took my radiator cap, cap off because um, I was lazy or whatever. And I uh, got all this out of the way. There might be an electrical connector or two under there, I think so. On your electrical connectors, almost all of them are, you know, made to go into the other s connector it's going to. So it, I really don't think you can mess that up too much, especially if you're taking pictures. Okay. And then, um, okay, uh, one thing that will happen is this is your ABS module. I think it's there on the Adventures as well. So you know on this module, bro, you will not take any brake lines, anything off of it, but it limits your access to work. And so there's three or four bolts, screws that hold it on. You take those out, all your hoses are still connected. Then it gives you that extra half inch of room that you're going to need to get everything out. <clears throat> so I took that loose to give myself some room. And uh, for my bike, 
uh, I probably caused myself some trouble, but on the back of the radiator is a little air scoop. You can't see it, but it's in there. And that air scoop was kind of on top of the valve cover, and I knew I wouldn't be able to get the valve cover off with that air deflector thing in it in the way it was. So on, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> is there was a plastic trim piece, two bolts under there. I took it off. Another plastic trim piece uh, right here, I took it off. Then you can get the two bolts to loosen up the radiator there, also these bolts, and it allowed me to move my radiator uh, out of the way. And I think what I did too is when I took some of these bolts out inside there, those are the bolts that hold on this uh, air deflector deal right there. And in hindsight, I don't know if I even needed to take that off. Uh, so you can check that out. If you move your radiator forward, this deflector piece might just get out of your way for you. Okay, then uh, type all your wires. Give yourself room to work. You'll be looking at your valve cover, the uh, spark plug. Well, they're not coils, but or maybe they're coils. Hell, I don't know. But the things that go down in, you know, to catch the spark plug are on top. And there's no way you'll be able to get your valve cover off with those on there. And so you disconnect the spark leads, you know, to the spark plug tube, whatever it's called. And then there was also, I can't remember, somehow it was clipped to these little metal tabs under here. And uh, so if you can see that, there's two of those, one on each side. And you can undo that, you know, with a little small screwdriver, like all these electrical connectors. Just get in there and you can pull that tab off. Then you can pull those spark plug tubes out of the way. And that'll give you the clearance you need to take your valve cover off. For me, uh, this one on, if I remember, the spark plug tube on the left, I think I was able to pull it out on the outside of the bike. You'll figure it out. Um, this one on this side, I think I came up through this way on the inside of the frame. But however, you'll just go slow and won't force anything and pull them out. Now, at that point, you can see the top of your valve cover... <clears throat> And uh, four bolts, I think, holding it on. And uh, you take those bolts off, pry it up real easy. You don't stick a screwdriver in here and try to jam it and get it loose. You do your best to get it loose. And I don't remember if the valve cover came out on this side of the bike or that side, but you'll get it out. And when you're out, when it's out at that point, now you can just do a visual look, not a thorough look, but kind of a cheat look on your uh, cam lobes. And so, if you're kind of new to this, this is your exhaust cam, right? There's one of the lobes. This is your intake. It's coming in, air intake's coming this way, and that lobe's kind of pointing down. And uh, since this is a twin cylinder, one, two, your lobes on this cylinder, right, will be different than your lobes on the far cylinder. So if you rotate this lobe up where you can get a good look at it, those lobes on the other side won't be up. Same as here. So you'll have to rotate your cams two or three or four times until you figure it out. To rotate your cams, you know, you can take your plugs out to lower compression and then rotate your crank inside here. I just did it the lazy way. I put it in fifth gear and I just banged the rear wheel until I could bang the, you know, the cam lobes around. And uh, this will help you get just a as good of a visual inspection as you can without going much deeper. So, you know, you'll rotate it around. You'll check your cam here. That's an exhaust. Check your intake as well. And here's how you can get a better look at the rest of them. There's four lobes per camshaft. So, obviously, you can check these two real easy, but the rest of them are hidden. And so, as you get to this point and you're rotating them around, they've got little... I don't know what you call cheater slots or peak slots or whatever, but so there is an intake lobe and the second lobe is going to be right there. So when this one's up, that one will be up and you can see it through the slot. For this cylinder, there's a cheater port and there's a cheater port so you can look at them. And then the same on the exhausts. You can visually inspect that one. You can look at this one through that cheater port. And then you can look at these through that cheater port, the other exhausts, and that one. 
Uh, if you're like me and you need reading glasses, good luck, but you may be able to figure it out. Uh, and that way you can rotate your cams around and at least get a look to see what kind of condition they're in. For what it's worth, uh, so mine is a, I think it's a 20 or a 21, 890. I've got 5,500 miles on it. And the exhausts look, they, nothing really on them to think about. On the intakes, I see I don't have it where you can look at it or I'd show you. But uh, on the intakes on mine, there was some slight discoloration on the chrome or whatever it is, the polish, if you will, uh, but it was, didn't really seem alarming and, uh, you know, it felt smooth. I did the fingernail test. I took a precision screwdriver, kind of ran it across there. There were no ridges. It wasn't hanging up anywhere. And so on mine, I, I'm just going to put another season or so on it. Uh, and then maybe next winter I'll get back in here and check it, but there were no, there was no grooving. So it didn't really scare me much although there was some discoloration on the lobes but i'm sure that's just from oil and wear and heat cycles and all that so uh uh one other thing that i learned is uh well it's in the service manual but i'll tell you if you wanted to go deeper and get a really good look at your cams where you can take them out and look at them under a microscope or whatever you have to take this top part off right here which is your cam bridge i think is what it's called you'll check your service manual when you're doing this but there's maybe a dozen bolts to take it off. If you're going to take your cam bridge off, you're going to read your service manual because you've got to watch out for your timing. You're going to take these cams out. And when you take, you're going to take, let me back up. You're going to take the bridge loose, this guide, you'll take it off, take the bridge loose. And when you start to raise the bridge, the cams are free and they'll move. And so your cam chain uh, will have slack and it'll be able to move. So you want to Make sure you top your cam chain so it doesn't drop down in here. And uh, you got to read your manual or talk to a mechanic or somebody you trust, and you've got your timing marks on these cams. And so uh, when you go to put it back together, you got to put it back together according to the manual. Um, and one thing I did learn is I remember this ABS module is in the way. I couldn't get the spark plug tubes off, and uh, and I was afraid, but I you know, raised up the ABS module so I could get them off. Uh, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get this cam bridge off if I wanted to. I'm not going to take mine off, but um, I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get it off because of these tubes that go down in here would hit. But these spark plug tubes are removable, and that'll give you probably the inch that you need. And so if you just, you know, put a channel lock on it or something with a towel and real easily kind of break it a little free, they'll just slide right out. And so, um, anyway, there's you, uh, easy walkthrough way to check your cams through the cheater holes. And then you'll just put everything back together in opposite form. Real careful. Good luck. If you do this yourself and dude, good luck with your cams. And when you get it all bolted back together, go ride some power wheelies, boys. See ya.